that continues um, quite complex, which is complex, which is yeah, 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 contradiction yeah. about being in the modern world. Yeah. Is quite a, I always find that seems very interesting. Because I think there's a lot of good challenges. We are used to delivering great experiences for people with performance, great performances, I suppose, in big liturgies and all. This is a bit different this time because this is about the journey to get there, which people don't normally see, and indeed it's not normally like this. What um, excites you about that, and what pitfalls do you maybe envisage along the way? Well, I think it's it's nice for all of the musicians who are involved just to be doing something a little bit out of the ordinary. Also, the opportunity on what can be a fairly set sort of liturgical occasion, sort of liturgical format, just to have a, a, a new kind of piece, a new sort of structure. Uh, to work with. I think it's, it's something we're looking forward to. Um, so much of my job, I suppose, here is about trying to combine the aspirational with the pragmatic. <laughs> so the pitfalls, I suppose, um, from my point of view, could potentially be pragmatic ones. So that we're trying to bring together a much larger group of performers than we would normally involve in a liturgy like this. Uh, with some elements that during my time here, which is now almost, almost eight years, uh, we haven't incorporated into services. Um, and the very particular nature of the way that we work here uh, means that the whole thing really has to be pulled together with a group of performers that I won't see until an hour or two before the service. So I think it's a question of just keeping a very careful eye on the, the sort of musical demands of the new work. And just to make sure that we can accommodate those demands within the, the timetable that we work with here and to make sure that it's done to the highest possible standard. Mm -hmm. yeah. This whole project is just a little bit different in that it's about the journey as much as what will happen on the night. Um, how do you feel about that creative journey? I find talking about the business of creativity not only in connection with church music but with the business of being a musician in general can be it's quite easy to sound a little bit sort of self-regarding about it because I think there's a, a popular sort of idea that creativity is something you sit down and you have these incredible epiphanies yeah. and you sit down and you decide, you know, for the next hours I'm going to create. Um, but actually you talk to many musicians and composers and actually the business of creativity day by day is about putting your hours in, is a phrase that someone has used to me. Mm -hmm. That you go to the desk or to the keyboard or whatever it is you're doing and you sit there and you just plug away and you plug away and you plug away. Mm -hmm. So a lot of creativity for me is just to do with the business of, of the craftsmanship of being a musician. Mm -hmm. um, that you're constantly trying to refine sometimes the smallest sort of details. And I think when you're in the middle of doing that, it doesn't feel particularly creative. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. um, but funnily enough, I think a lot of people, not only musicians, find that the moments when they do have the, the kind of bright idea, uh, when they're not actually thinking about the thing that they're yeah. trying to have the idea about. So you might be in the queue at the supermarket, waiting to catch a train, or you're know, doing the washing up. And then suddenly, unbidden, quite often these, these kind of things will flash into your mind, think, should try this. Um, but then I think the, the business of translating the idea into actuality doesn't feel like a creative process for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and there's a very interesting essay by um, Hugh Wood, who's one of the great British contemporary composers, uh, which is ostensibly, well, it's called a photograph of Brahms. But um, a lot of it is about the business of uh, being a musician and being a composer particularly. And he makes the rather nice point that, um, you know, the biopics by Ken Russell never show Brahm sitting down at the desk with a strong cup of coffee at five o'clock in the morning and <laughs> doing his seven hours until yeah. lunch. Yeah. Because that isn't the, the kind of glamorous uh, idea of creativity. You mentioned you know, one of the great British contemporary composers, and here we are working with Tom Hyde, who's someone I know you've worked with before, and I'm just wondering how you look forward to this creative engagement. Well, Tom has written, I think, two pieces for me personally, as a solo player. He's written something for the choir previously, um, and on several occasions I've performed and recorded music by him that uh, he's written for other people. So, you know, we know each other very well. And this whole business of performers and composers collaborating, it's, uh, 
for want of a better phrase, it's kind of big business at the moment, especially academically. There's a lot of sort of theory about you know yeah. the process with the capital P. Um, and actually, every composer takes a different view. Some people positively welcome uh, the idea that the uh, performer would contribute ideas and sort of try to shape the outcome in a very hands-on kind of way. A lot of composers want nothing to do with that. Um, the deal is that you commission them, you agree a fee, you write the cheque, they write the piece, you learn it, you play it, everyone mm -hmm. goes home. One of the interesting things about this project, I think, is going to be because of the involvement of so many people and some slightly unusual aspects, um, it'll be a, a kind of renegotiation, if you like, of, of that sort of um, association. And certainly in the past when we've worked together, we've, we've very much been along the lines of I ask for the piece, Tom writes it, I learn it. Inevitably, by the time we get to uh, this season of the year, we will have had, or we will have to deliver 18 Christmas carol services, beginning, I think, even before Advent Sunday this year. Because we raise uh, three quarters of a million pounds for charity, which is a great thing to do. Uh, does this Advent project in any way redeem that season for you? So, yes, absolutely. The, the opportunity just to engage with something different in a season where kind of repetition and routine and, and that kind of thing can yeah. sometimes become a little bit stifling is a very welcome one. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let's see where it takes us to. Sure. Mm.